to Marvel Talk. We're finally at the end of our nine-day journey, and boy, it's been a journey. There have been some ups. There have been some downs. Andre's had some episodes he didn't like. I've liked most of them. There was only one down for me, and that was the, the premiere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we are here. I am Oled Ed Fries. This is apparently the Admiral Andre C. And we are here to talk about Holy Cow! What if Strange Supreme intervened? I was wrong. So was I. I, think we were, we, no, I don't think anybody predicted the way this episode was going to go. Fuck. For those that have been watching, this episode is the, the best episode of both seasons in my mind. Definitely it the best episode of this season for sure. It incorporates everything we've seen so far in What If, for yeah. the most part. Um, at the beginning of this episode, we pick up right where we kind of left off last time with uh, Captain Carter being picked up by uh, Doctor Strange. He goes ahead and turns her uh, the ale that they're drinking into single malt, single malt bourbon, which mm -hmm. she is very appreciative of. And he tells her that he's been intervening, and he needs her help. So she yeah. goes with him, and he, he starts to explain the story that, you know what? The Watcher has the right idea, but he doesn't go far enough. He doesn't intervene. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing since the Multiverse Avengers is going around and intervening in all of these universes. And I've been taking their universe killers. And he shows the wall, and it's got all these different characters in there. Mm -hmm. And you, you can see Infinity Ultron over here. Uh, you can see the Freak in here. All kinds of different universe killers mm. that are kidnapped in here. And he says he needs her help with one of them. So she reluctantly agrees to do this because she, she believes in the Watcher. She doesn't fully love the Watcher. She doesn't always like what he does. But she gets the Watcher. She understands who he is and what he does. Mm -hmm. And he sends her the, to the Dakota Badlands. However, he doesn't just transport her there. No. In a thing going all the way back to Doctor Strange, he has like the mirror wall door things with the little knobs. Mm -hmm. But instead of being just to go someplace on Earth, these doors are now multiversal. They travel dimensions. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's also in what he calls the Sanctum Infinitum. Yeah, the Infinity Which, Sanctum. Oh my God, it's it's fucking insane. It's it's so insane. We we can't tell you and take enough time to. We'd be talking about this episode for two hours if we did mm -hmm. everything and talk about everything that goes on in this episode. Um, we're on a bit of a time crunch because we want to get this done early. Yeah, and I got plans. Some, because somebody <laughs> has to go watch World's End, because God forbid MJF have to fight uh, Samoa Joe. That's going to be a great match. Eat my dick. It's, it, it'll be fine. It'll be broadly fine. It'll be a great match. <laughs> it'll pop Die Jack versus Eddie. That'll be for sure. It will not. Yeah, it will. It'll be, it'll be 45 minutes longer and half as good. You're as just a hater. That's all you are. Not a Anyways, <laughs> when we go to the Dakota Badlands, we see a scene of Captain Carter trying to catch Kaori. Mm -hmm. And we find out a little bit more about what happened in that post credit scene in Kaori's episode. Mm -hmm. Doctor Strange didn't go there to recruit her. He went there to take her. Mm -hmm. And as Kaori tells us, 
He's not just collecting multiverse villains. He's collecting the heroes along the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such a good twist. Right out of the gate. Just a perfect twist. You're like, oh, okay, he's the big bad for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's what I was again, excited about. There is very... Th the whole point of this episode is the battle that we're getting to. They're setting mm -hmm. the stage here. At this point now, Kehori gets through to Captain Kirk. And by the way, this is lovely. The two of them have a wonderful chemistry. Mm -hmm. They do a really good job together. I think that they were well put together. And this also... I know we talked about how culturally appropriate it was in an episode set in her own time and her own place mm -hmm. that she spoke solely the language of her people, the Moloch mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. So much nicer hearing her speak English. Yeah, <laughs> and again, it, it's, it's just, I think it's just a point of the episode to be hard. Like the fact that Captain, like Captain Carter wouldn't understand her. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. No, but I, I, it, it made it a more wonderful viewing experience to not have to read the subtitles. And there was little spots where she would speak in her language at times. Which Agreed, was, and I'm fine with it. I, yeah. I love that. I love the fact that when she gets super excited, she's yelling out things in her own language. Or when she mm -hmm. sees like people from her, she uses her own language. I don't mm -hmm. mind her using the Mohawk language. I just like that the whole episode... Every time she talks, it's not in that language. That, that I yeah. found really fascinating. Yeah. But of course, at this point, they come back, and now it's the two of them against Stephen Strange. And we see that Strange is bad. Evil Strange has returned. Mm -hmm. More importantly, we find out the reason he's doing this. Andre, what is that reason? He wants to... To revive his his universe and bring back his Christine, which is like, dude, you, you you fucked it up so badly. Why are you trying to fix shit? Just, just no, just no. But of course, we have to have the villain, and Stephen Strange is this. And again, it goes back to that episode four, which is one of the most heartbreaking episodes of What If, the mm -hmm. episode with Christine. But they start having a battle. Captain Carter sends her shield around the room. Well, actually, no. On their way to have this battle, they find... No, I'm sorry. They confront Strange for the first time. Mm -hmm. At that point, Peggy needs something to give her the advantage. She takes her shield, and she breaks open the orbs that have all the multiversal heroes and villains. And we start seeing just... Utter pandemonium. Like, dude, there was three that I really noticed that I loved. There was this, like, Hulk with this, like, these big green swords or whatever. Like, big so, going sword. That, that is was... that is a version of Hulk from the comics. It's not even a Hulk. It is Thor with gamma powers. Oh, it's it Thor. Is... I thought it was Hulk. It's Thor. Yeah, and this is Thor. Oh, it's it Thulk. Is... It's Thulk. It's yeah, Thulk. This is... This is the and there was like a cyborg rocket raccoon because he had all these extra pieces on him. It was so cool. And then Wild West Loki, man. Yeah, <laughs> Loki three... from I want to say it was twenty nineteen. I think is the uh, is the comic run that that's from. Again, I watched yeah. Screen Crush and they broke down a bunch of these. I didn't write any of them down. Um, yeah, but no, Wild the... West Loki is what I loved. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. But we also see a return of another. What if um, character? Mm -hmm. If Killmonger had saved Tony Stark to the Killmonger that turned on them in the season one finale, infinite stoned Killmonger. Oh, we're skipping over Scarlet Witch because there was a zombie Scarlet Witch right before that. I, for, up... I forgot that was before that. I apologize. Yeah, we can talk they, about fought, they, they fought zombie Scarlet to fight zombie Scarlet Witch and all her for zombies. And Carrie's like, oh, I know what zombies are. <laughs> like, she's like, zombies exist everywhere. And But then, like, they like she like Kiri busts out her like transport power. She has the ability to use the Tesseract powers to transportate people, and she takes away Scarlet Witch, and then Hella takes over the zombie army. I was like, ha ha ha! Then Surtur shows up, and I'm like, Jesus fuck! <laughs> so good that that, that sequence. I honestly thought the sequence was next. It was so good. 
Yeah. I mean, and and just... then and then they run away from that, and that's where Thanos attacks. That he gets snapped away, and you're like, what the fuck? And then we get uh, Ultimate Killmonger Inf- there. Infinite Killmonger. Yeah. And Infinite Killmonger. This is where one of the the only downside I've seen in the entire episode. This is the one problem I have. They made Kahori a touch overpowered. I agree. Because in this moment, Kahori then uses her ability to take Infinite Killmonger, who has six stones, including the stone that gives her her power, mm-hmm. out of the infinite in, in the infinite gauntlet armor, and transports him into another part of the battle with all the other people. And he just goes so the armor is left by yeah, but the armor is left by itself. Mm-hmm. I have an issue with that. Yeah, I get it. It, it, it. it negates a lot, like, like, really negates some stuff from season one. You're like, oh, okay, all we need is somebody that can go like this. <laughs> really. I just think, I, I just think it's interesting that the person with six infinity stones can't beat the person with the power of one infinity stone. Yeah, I, I agree. It was very much like, huh. I love the idea that, that Killmonger could snap Thanos. That makes sense. Six stones versus six stones. Mm-hmm. Elements of surprise. It's perfect. That makes sense. Mm. But like I said, the Kohori thing was a little bit irksome just because I felt like, and, and we'll talk about more in the episode, how she's mm. a touch overpowered the rest of the episode. Very much so. But they finally get to the forge. The forge is the area that deep. Oh, that and Captain shoot. Carter. Captain Carter puts on the infinity oh, suit. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot I did talk about that. But there we go. She takes on pieces of the armor, and we see the the stones inside of her Union Jack. I love the way it's two stones across on each side, with one stone on top on each side. So it just like falls that. into the 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 image of the uh, Union Jack. Fantastic. Yeah, I like it. I really do. Again, we cannot tell you how talented these graphic artists are on these episodes. Mm-hmm. They're, they're when we great. get to the battle, the most important thing in this entire episode, we get to the battle. It is Doctor Strange, Supreme Strange, with all of the powers of everything he's ever absorbed, taking on Infinite Carter and Cohort. Mm-hmm. And this is so wonderful because they're so evenly matched. Okay, but the, my problem was, why wasn't he the one... How did, how couldn't he just have stopped Ultron then in Season 1 if he had all this power? Because remember, they kept asking, where's Strange? Why is he not fighting? And it's because they had a different mission in Season 1. Our I know, mission but... mission in it, Season it, 1 was to take a stone and use a specific stone. And if you, but if, if he was this strong, why didn't they just have him roll in against Ultron then? Maybe he wasn't. Remember, he's been going through universe after universe and just and, t- and k- taking universe killers. There's yeah. a very good possibility that he's just become that much stronger since the last time we've seen him. It's true. It's true. You're all right on that one. I, I think that there's, a, that there's a legitimate loophole there with why he's so powerful is the fact that you could have seen, based on his personality and the way he is in this, I think you could have seen him continuing to get stronger and stronger since we last seen him. That's true. I mean, he kidnapped Infinity Ultron. He went back in time and kidnapped that Infinity Ultron. He's, he's in, literally, he's in this glass bubble. If you look on the very far right of this yeah. glass bubble, that's yeah. Infinity Ultron right there. So, like, he's strong enough to go back and kidnap him. Mm-hmm. So I think, I, I think at this point, we can vastly say that he is way superior to the, the, than the strange that we saw before. True, true. The battle continues with Captain Carter using the reality stone, I think it is, for the most part. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a pink glow, so I can't tell if it's the reality stone or if it's supposed to be the power stone. Well, she, switched, she was switching between reality and power throughout the fight. Is what she and was doing. Fa- and it's fantastic. Like she's using it to be able to go ahead and get through his defenses with her shield. Mm-hmm. Um, she's using the space stone to bounce the shield from place to place to surprise him. Kahori is attempting to and mostly failing to try to take him out via physical attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Strange decides enough's enough. And there's some beautiful imagery in this fight. And 
too much imagery to go into right now. There, there is, you just need to watch it. You just simply need to watch it. Mm-hmm. But at one point, Strange decides enough's enough. And like all villains, when you can't beat the hero, you give the hero somebody to save so you can go ahead and do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And Strange opens the portals and in start dropping all the people that he wants to put into the forge. Mm-hmm. And Kahori starts using her power to lift them back up into blue portals that she's trying to use to send them back to the universes that they belong. But Strange goes ahead and takes her out <coughs> and starts doing it again. And then Infinite Carter uses the Time Stone to stop time and try to send them back to Kegori's portal. Mm-hmm. Strange looks at her and goes, oh, I mastered that trick a long time ago. Mm-hmm. He starts using, and it's so great because we saw the Time Stone on Time Stone thing last season with him and Ultron. And I loved this version of it because he's, He's being sarcastic. He's being the asshole Stephen Strange that I really enjoy. Yeah. Like last season when Strange Supreme was trying to be nice and doing the good things, I didn't love it. But I love this, like, just pure asshole, just jerk Stephen Strange. It's my favorite version of Stephen Strange. Oh, it's so good. (laughs) And they start going into battle with each other and they start trying to do it. And Hela is the first to realize it. And Hela says that they decides that they can help Captain Carter because they want to go back to their world. So you know, the only way to do that is by help with Captain Carter. Hela throws up her crown. And all of the other heroes and villains in this section start doing the same. We see the Ten Rings. We mm-hmm. see Mjolnir. We mm-hmm. see, as I already mentioned, Hela's crown. Uh, Drax's daggers. Uh, there are two copies of uh, Gamora's swords. Odin spear. Odin spear. Gilnir is part of this as well. Um, I believe I even saw the All Father sword in there at one point. I can't guarantee, but I think. I no, think no, no. That was that was that was, oh, uh, was that Falk- No, no, no. That was Falk's sword. Okay. Because that's what she's using to like shoot the green out of the sword at one point. That was Falk, Falk's sword. Okay. Yeah. I mean, th- th- there were so many things. Oh, yeah. So many things. And they start using these weapons. And my biggest problem, like I talked about Kyori being a touch overpowered. And me and Andre have argued a little bit about this, and Andre believes this is okay. Yeah. I don't like that Kehori is able to use her space stone magic to wield Mjolnir. I just think she just floated it to herself and she <laughs> because she is worthy. Because like again, she's still kind of a pure character. All she wants to do is help. And I just I, I think she's she's worthy. I don't know. I like there being a few only a select few that are worthy of of like we went through how many Marvel movies to see Captain America be worthy to hold the hand. Now, granted, apparently, according to Marcus and Nick Feely, he could have picked it up in Age of Ultron, but chose not to, to save Thor embarrassment. He felt it shift and went, nope, I'm not doing this. <laughs> like, we see Thor react to it, but apparently Marcus and Nick Feely have come out and said that, 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 that there is a version of the script where he completely lifts Mjolnir. In mm-hmm. that scene, and they didn't it, like it, yeah. but they wrote it to they wrote it to see what would happen because they always knew at some point he would wield Mjolnir because Steve Rogers is worthy. He's yeah. always just like Captain worthy. Carter and just like Ahori, they are all worthy. Captain Carter never wield. She she flew with Mjolnir. I don't think she yes, ever wielded. But I, I believe she is worthy enough, though. If if Rogers is worthy, she's worthy. Come on. I, I just I hate. I don't hate. I just like the idea that a brand new original character with no backstory other than a half an hour episode and the 30 minutes that we've seen of this episode so far, they've instantly decided is worthy of holding Mjolnir. Like, that should be a very... Jane Foster 
wielded Molnir, and she is a bitch. So that that negates it all right there. Is that now, Jane Foster, now, a super, super a, a superiorly flawed human being, wielded Molnir? I so that is. I, the, I will def, I will defend that with going. At least there's an entire comic run devoted to. It. There's still, an entire run of the even, comics that makes it that makes it make sense. I agree. I don't think that Jane Foster should be able to wield Molnir. I love the idea of the story of in the comics, and it, it's roughly the same story that we see in, in Thor uh, 4, which is that she's dying of cancer, and she calls out to Mjolnir to help her because of the fact that she knows it has healing properties. And it yeah, heals her cancer while she wields it. Like, I get it. Bill I has, has wielded it, and he is not pure of heart. Like, right no. there, alone, he's not pure of heart when Beta Ray, when Beta Ray Bill in the comics has, has ran it, has it. So yeah, no, it, it, like I said, I, I just like that there's a small bit of things, but it's all comic based. I just did, like I said, it irks me because it's a brand new original character with no story, and all of a sudden, in the little bit we've been told, she's apparently as worthy as Captain America. Like it's 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 for me, it's a bit problematic. I don't love it. I don't love it. It didn't I'm need okay to happen. It. it didn't need to happen. Okay, Squirrel Wait. Girl in the comics has wielded it. So right we, there, that we, is we, we have Squirrel Girl has many, many, many other things wrong with her, including her relationship with Wolverine, which we won't go into because that's creepy as hell. Anyways, mm. moving on. <laughs> they finally defeat Stephen Strange. It was good. Defeat. Air quotes. <laughs> so what happens is is Stephen Strange, to combat all of these weapons, turns into the ultra badass version of himself. That's the the beast version. Demon Strange. Demon Strange. Yes. Um, oh, that was great to see. He's got the. At this point now, he has the third eye. He has the creepy like hand smile. Like he's got like a smile on his hand. Yeah, that's just it's gross. Ultra like, creepy. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> And they continue going back and forth, and they decide to start to destroy the Forge. As the only way to defeat him, they're going to destroy the Forge. Mm -hmm. And it start, they get all the other people back home to where they belong, and it starts to suck Stephen Strange into the thing. And Captain Carter, throughout this entire battle, is trying to reason with him, because, of course, she's a captain. In all captains, Captain America, Captain Britain, Captain uh, Carter, all of them are the same type of thing where they always want to reason with their villains. They don't want to kill a villain. They want to go ahead and change the villain, try to heal the villain if at all possible. Mm -hmm. In doing so, she gets through to the absorbed Stephen Strange that was split from Stephen Strange in his episode four in season one. The good Stephen Strange, the one who didn't go crazy with power and try to absorb everything. Mm -hmm. She absorbs that, that Stephen Strange, starts popping out of Demon Strange to try to win control back. As literally, Doctor Strange fights his own demons. Mm -hmm. You can fight his own demons. <laughs> literally, literally, figuratively. The whole night, it is all true. He confronted his own demons and he pushes himself into the forge to end all of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and everything goes bright white. <laughs> There's no saying how good this episode is, it is just phenomenal. And if you haven't, there are so many callbacks that we don't touch on here that you could, like I said, we could go scene by scene for hours talking about this. well i even that like when when strange sacrificed himself that made me think like with the light the way it came it made me think of loki but at, at when the when the loom exploded yeah that's what it made me think of i'm like oh shit it was very similar to that so yeah yeah just utter perfection the animation the storytelling the writing in this episode the the voice acting as uh, really, there's only four major voices in the entire episode. There is Benedict Cumberbatch, 
there's um what is it uh Davari, I believe is her name. Uh Devarly. Uh yeah. Kahori's character character uh voice actress. Uh Haley Atwell and of course Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get the finale of this episode. We're in a new universe. Stock Doctor Strange. The Strange Supreme did exactly what he wanted. He brought his universe back. However, yeah, I was going to say, however, the, the sacrifice of the original Stephen Strange, the good Stephen Strange, took himself out of this universe to bring back everybody else, which is just fantastic. It makes it sense. Focused, it does. It makes perfect sense that that Strange would sacrifice himself to make sure that everybody else could live, but he would die. Mm -hmm. And we see the Watcher talking with Peggy. And we finally get an answer to Andre's question from last week. Why didn't the, 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 the Watcher go ahead and take her? Because we had to get to this point. Mm -hmm. He could see what was coming, and it wasn't just bad storytelling as Andre wanted it to be in Episode 8. Mm -hmm. There was a point and a reason. By the way, but I, I like what you said. I like what you, you he did in contact Strange to go get her. He just knew Strange would eventually go get her. So he was like, ah, I'll let her stew. But 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 he could have still taken her home and Strange could have went tried. to her. No, no, but he could have oh, taken yeah. her home before that Strange showed up, and then Strange would just have to pop to her universe to pull her out. So anyway, it stands, it was still poor writing on the sense of the watcher. No, no, no. Yes, it yes, was fantastic. Yes, yes. No. Yes. Also, I love this where there's an there's a there's a battle when she goes to the Dakota Badlands. The Watcher tries to talk her out of doing this, mm -hmm. and he tries he tries to take her home one more time. He's like, look, look, look. You found out what can happen if you intervene where you shouldn't. Let let me let me bring you back home. And she goes, no, no, no I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And he's like. I don't want to narrate what might happen from here. Oh, just so good. And we don't, and we don't get a voiceover. <laughs> we don't get any voice of writing uh, of Watcher again until after the battle's yeah. over. Yeah, he watches the entire battle, does not intervene, and then afterwards, he takes Peggy. He says, "Do you want to go home now? Are you ready to go home now?" Like. He's basically giving us the reason. Like you say, he could have done it. She wasn't ready to go home because he looks at her and says, are you finally ready to go home now? And she says, no, I'm not. Well, she says, yes, but can we take the scenic route? Yeah, because she wants to see the things that he's seen. And he mm -hmm. takes her to the nexus of all realities, which is so, it's so great to see her with the Watcher in that, world between worlds kind of nexus B place where he watches everything from. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a... And I think that's what we're going to pick up in season three. No, I think no, no. we're going to see... No, no, it's the next, it's the next part that we're going to pick up at. <clears throat> well, I, I think this is something... This is going to be part of the story for season three is going to be Peggy watching with the Watcher. And it is going to be something else. However, at the end, very end of the episode... They end up in front of Yggdrasil. Mm -hmm. But not the Yggdrasil we know. This is the Yggdrasil from the end of Loki. Yeah. That's Loki's Yggdrasil. I am super excited to see what they do. I was shocked and amazed that we got a tie-in to the MCU from the What If. I'm I was not, not expecting I was not expecting it. Because remember, it is, still is the multiversal tree, right? That's what well, it now is. it's the tree. It's the tree of time. It's the tree of all the well, multiverse. It's like, the multiversal tree, essentially. It's it, it's yeah. it's a how do, how did it how did they word it? I was reading on one. Yeah, they call like a couple a few different places are calling it. You, you just showed the multiversal tree. Yeah, but it's a tree that branches all of time and space. For those that don't know what we're talking about, Yggdrasil is a Norse tree. It's, it's a tree. It's the tree of life, according to Norse mythology. It's Groot. And no, it's not Groot. Groot, Groot, Groot comes from Yggdrasil. 
It does not. Groot is his own different being. Uh, Yggdrasil is the tree of knowledge and the tree of life in the Norse mythology. And that's where Groot comes from. It's not living! Stop. Stop. I'll make you late for your party. I don't care. <laughs> we'll argue this one out. <laughs> I I I choose to believe he is he is he he is a, from a branch of Yggdrasil. That is my belief. You're allowed to have your incorrect belief. We know we know he's not because the collector in the Guardians movie tried to go ahead and get him. And mm -hmm. also remember, Yggdrasil is not living. Yggdrasil is just a tree of knowledge and life. It connects the nine realms. It is just a thought in a being. It isn't. It isn't a thing. In some, but legitimately, in some comics, he has been known to come from Yggdrasil. So, um, I'm not yeah. wrong here. <laughs> sure. Anyway, no, he, he has been told that in, in certain comic storylines that he is from Yid, he, he is a branch off of Yggdrasil. That's why he's so anyways. Amazed. Anyways, that was season two of What If. Again, if you want to see any of our episodes, what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps? What if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Woo -woo. What if Happy Hogan saved Christmas? What if Ca Iron Man crashed into the Grand Master? What if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Song? What if Kihori reshaped the world? What if Hela found the Ten Rings? What if the Avengers assembled in 1602? And of course, the episode you just watched, you can rewatch after having watched all those. What if Strange Supreme intervened? So freaking good. Andre, tell the good people where they can find you for the rest of this week. On at that Canada guy on Twitter, at that Canada dude on Instagram. You can find me over at YouTube, uh, uh, on Facebook at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk, YouTube, youtube.com slash at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk. Where you can find me and Mel dropping our uh, starter review. We we're supposed to drop it today, but it's going to come out tomorrow. Just schedules and other stuff. Um, our our starter review of the uh, uh, Stardom Dream or Dream Queendom show will be dropping tomorrow evening. Because we're going to record it early afternoon, dropping in the evening. And then uh, we'll be having the uh, Walker Stewart interview coming out on January 1st. Uh, we're having a review, uh, a, a review of Wrestle Kingdom coming out on January 5th or 6th, depending on when we get it recorded. And we'll be having uh, our best of the year coming out probably in the second week of January, along with the the review of the January first Stardom show, which features the Rookie of the Year tournament and the one day Triangle Derby tournament, which was a month long last year. So I'm actually happy it's now just one day long, <laughs> eleven match shows. So that's gonna be it. And we're gonna have our uh, weekly ish weekly ish wrap ups on OLE coming out in the new year, talking about Japanese professional wrestling. So check that out. Yeah, for those that haven't seen their stuff, it is going to be a condensed version of the best matches of the week, the best stories of the week, anything like that. It'll be right here on our local establishment. You can go ahead and get a taste of what Andre Mes what Melball's Wrestling Chat is. And Andre Melball's Wrestling Chat is going to be a long-form version, kind of like what I do, taking over on Tuesdays with me and Astrid. Where you can go ahead and find me at edfries12584 on Twitter. You can find me on the Twitch at edfries2002. This Tuesday, you can see me reviewing No New Year's Evil, not No Year's Evil, New Year's Evil with Asher as we see whether or not Ilya Dragunov can retain his NXT championship against Trick Williams. We're all going to see a fantastic three women's matches on a six-match card. It is going to be a fantastic night for women's wrestling on that show. Um, make sure you go ahead and check it out. Make sure you go ahead and give us a like, a comment, a sub uh, subscribe here on the Our Local Establishment YouTube channel. And until next time, we'll see you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>